Hi everyone, Joe Ordia here for Solar Surge, and today we're coming back to you from RE Plus, the International Solar Conference here in Las Vegas. And I'm here again this morning with Chris Thompson, Vice President of Product at Solar Edge, and we're looking at the new Solar Edge Home Hub Inverter System. So Chris, good to see you again. Nice Thanks again for joining us. Nice to see you again, Joe. Thanks for coming by. Absolutely. No, thank you for giving me a walkthrough on all this. So, so tell us, Chris, what are the different components here that make up the Solar Edge Home Hub Inverter System? Sure. Sure. Yeah. Let me go through the components first. So we are probably always start off with the inverter. So this is our new Home Hub Inverter, and maybe a little bit later we'll talk about the new features and uh, things that are going on in the development there. So that's your primary inverter. This is what we call our backup interface. So. If it's just a solar installation, you don't need this, but if someone wants a backup in the home, so they have a battery, they want to disconnect from the grid when the grid goes down. So this basically provides that disconnect switch and that gives you that grid isolation. So important feature when you have storage or when you want backup. Now, now this box here is a this new is box. New. I've never seen this yeah, before. So this, is, this is a new box and it, it's very simple, but very elegant in some ways. This is called the Solar Edge Connection Unit. So as you know, when you do a lot of installations, often you're using like wire raceways and gutters. Um, and what we found is those are a little bit difficult to work with. And so we, we have this one here, and it's basically just like a, a wiring raceway. But what we've done is we've pre-embedded in it all of the connection features to the inverter and to a backup interface. What's really clever about this is once you mount it on the wall, it then creates a, a reference system, and this plugs in and drops on it, and this plugs in and drops on it. Your cables go through here, your PV can come in through the side, you can go to your load center of the home, you know, you can come in through the top. And so we've found it saves like a couple hours of installation just having this box. And of course, from an appearance perspective, it's a little bit nice because it, it blends in and it matches the color of the rest of the equipment. So this is a new product. Um, we haven't uh, quite released it yet, but it'll be on the price list shortly. So yeah, that's great. I mean, as, as an electrician, I can see just how, how this is going to save a tremendous amount of time. Having the, 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 the raceway pre-built, having the knockouts pre-cut, and then as you said, once you have this set, everything else kind of falls into place. You don't have to you know, measure everything individually. And in, in, in the process of developing it was very interesting. We spent a lot of time following our customers in the field. And you know, when you follow a customer, you kind of want to help them do the job. But you have to sit back and watch them do it. And then we realized, you know, we never made a raceway before, but we see a lot of installers are using these raceways. And we thought, okay, we could, we could embed in some features that are very helpful for them. And so just really by, by listening to our customers and watching them, um, thinking like an anthropologist and, and how they install things in the field. And like I said, technically very simple, but it does uh, save a couple hours on installation. Excellent, excellent. All right, well that's that's good to see. Now you mentioned something to me earlier when we were off camera about that there is a wireless communication between the different components. Is it yeah. Wi-Fi based or how does that work? Yeah, so, so one thing I'll talk about, so with the new inverter that we have here, there's two elements to the communications that have changed with it. So what we have is embedded when you buy the inverter, there's wireless communications for the home. So most homeowners, you know, they want to monitor the, the system, it connects to the cloud, and, and they'll do that through the Wi-Fi network in the home. So that Wi-Fi is embedded here, and no, no separate installation is needed to do that. So that helps with the installation. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the second communications is our ecosystem of accessories is using another wireless protocol called Google OpenThread. And so if you look at the battery here, uh, earlier we talked about the EV charger. Those use Google OpenThread, and there's a couple interesting things that happen there. Increasingly, we see on installations when they run a, a, a wired communication, you know, they don't know where the devices are and they need to make that communications cable. And, and sometimes they make, make mistakes on the pinout, so it's an area of reliability. Uh, sometimes we're seeing like RS-45 or like CAN bus. These are like old and slow protocols. And then when you want to do a software update, it takes a while. So the wireless communication is faster. And then from a third perspective is the aesthetics. So you don't have a wire running on the wall. In some cases, you know, the aesthetics are a little bit better by doing that. So, so now we have that communication, so there's wireless to the home, there's wireless to the accessories that we've talked about, and again, faster, more reliable installation, and it makes it look cleaner at the same time. Very cool, very cool. Um, now, no, another thing I noticed here, these look like current, current sensors that are hooked up, hooked up, is that to the backup interface or to the inverter? How does this tie into the, um, yeah, yeah. So with the system? Here, um, so one of the new features here that's really important 
is there's a, a capability called PCS, or Power Control Systems. So one thing that we run into in homes is, and, and even my, home, my own home is like this, you have a small load center in the home, and if you want to install PV, you find out you need to a, paint, a main panel upgrade. And that's very expensive. They're like several thousand dollars to do one of these panel upgrades. Now what this feature does is with power control system, you, you take uh, a, a, a connection from here and you, you run these sensors here. And this is just a little load center on the home. You see it's a, it comes off on very easily. And basically it puts intelligence into the load center of the home. And so if the load center of the home starts becoming overloaded, it basically can reduce the amount of PV on the home and therefore make sure that this is running in a proper mode. So it kind of takes an unintelligent load center and makes it an intelligent load center. And, and it helps with that perspective and helps avoid the main panel upgrade. And so part of it is this here, this little white box here is our meter. So all of our inverters, not all of them, most of them have an embedded meter. So this is actually an ANSI revenue grade meter, 0.5% accurate. So we're the only inverter company that does that embedded in the inverter. And so now what the inverter can do is it sees the solar that's being generated and it sees what the home is doing. So now it has visibility to all of the energy flow that's within the home. And it gives it that ability to, to kind of start becoming a smart energy management system. So this is a really uh, powerful feature. We, we've seen some other vendors um, offer PCS this is the first time where I've seen what we call embedded PCS, so where it's built in. Um, normally what they're doing is they put in a separate meter and then they get our own wiring and CTs to, CTs to the meter. In this case, it's built right into the, into the inverter here. And so, from, again, from the installation perspective, between the wiring, connection unit, really fast uh, install in terms of getting into the new product. Cool, well I know this is an issue that comes up a lot with California homes. Let's say the home yep. has a 100 amp panel or 125 amp panel, and typically we're limited to back feeding into that either only a 20 or 25 amp AC breaker. Yeah. So so can, can we, does that allow us to potentially back feed more? And if so, can you tell us what, what those limits yes. are? Just a quick word from our sponsor, Savant Power and the Savant Energy Management System. If you're considering an investment in a solar plus storage system, then you're going to want to have maximum visibility and control of how much energy you're harvesting, how much energy you're storing, and how that energy is being distributed within the home. The new Savant power system allows you to dynamically control which circuits are on and which circuits are off depending on battery state of charge, allowing you to extend your battery running time during a blackout. The system also includes an integrated electric vehicle charger, allowing you to charge directly from solar or from the grid or a combination of both. So if you'd like to learn more information, you can visit the Savant Power website or click the link in the description below so that you can get in touch with an installer right away. So that is precisely why this uh, cap capability was generated. And it started in the electrical code a few years ago, and then it took a little while for like, solutions to be able to be developed. So often, a 100 amp load center in the home, you can only put a 3.8 kilowatt inverter in there. It's what we call the 120% roll. So you got a 100% loaded main panel, and then you can do 20% with the inverter. So that would mean a, a 20 amp breaker or a 3.8 kW. So now you could take, uh, you could put a 7.6 or an 11.4 kW inverter even in a 100 amp load center. So you get a lot of energy in there and not need to do that upgrade. And again, it's this intelligence, it now knows what's being used and it has visibility to all the generation in the home and it enables you to do that. So we think it's a great feature and it'll really enable people to get more solar at a lower cost than, than existing systems would allow them to do. Very cool. All right, guys, quick, quick segue here, teaching opportunity. So what we're talking about here is, is overload capacity on the AC circuit breaker panel. So the idea here is, if the panel's rated for say 100 amps, right, there's a, there's a potential in theory that you could be pulling the full 100 amps in from the utility grid and then the solar, if the solar is at max power, it could be pushing in an additional 20, 30, 40 amps. So the, the, the electric code limits us to a 20% overload. In other words, if the panel has potential to pull 100 amps from the grid, we, we cannot push any more than 20 amps in extra from solar. But what this system does, if I'm understanding it correctly, is that if the current sensors detect that you're getting close to that 100 amp limit coming in from the grid, then it will throttle itself down to make sure that the solar output 
doesn't go over that 20% overload rule. And the reason is because if you, if you pull too much current through this panel, the busing is going to overheat and you've created a fire hazard. And so I'm thinking, Chris, if, I, if, you're, if I'm understanding you correctly, if the sensors detect the current's getting too high on the grid side, then it just throttles the solar down to make sure we stay within that safe range. You, you, you nailed it very well. And so some interesting features we had to build in is these are actually fault tolerant uh, current sensors now. So for example, if you take one off, it notices that you took it off and it'll turn off the inverter or it'll throttle it back. Or if you were to do something like pinch a wire or nick a wire, so these are, they look a lot like conventional current sensors. They actually are fault tolerant current sensors. And it's partly here and it's partly with the, uh, with the meter that I talked about over there. So it senses these things and if it were to detect that there was a fault in the system, it, it can shut it down. But this allows you now to put more PV into the load center. Because in practice, it's extremely uncommon for a load center to be running at its full capacity. It's, 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 it's not really practical or possible for it to happen too often. Um, and so that's why it's, it's a really nice feature for someone to have to get more solar into their home. Okay, Chris, one last question, because I know yeah. we're a little bit short on time right here. So uh, the home hub inverter, because I know that's the main subject here, the home hub yes. inverter, which is kind of the central engine of this system, now, is this single inverter capable of, of battery and no battery, or are there separate models that the battery capable one and the, or versus one that's just for grid tie only? Sure, yeah. So, so this is the home hub inverter. So what that means is it can handle solar and battery. We have another line that we call the Wave, and the, the home Wave inverter is just meant for PV. Now, what we are seeing, I would say, more commonly now is people install the home hub inverter. It's not like that much more expensive to install this model. And then they, they, they know that the home is always future ready. So you can come back, you know, so if you're installed, you can go back to your sell your customer and say, hey, would you like to add in uh, an EV charger that we just talked about? It could be a DC charger, it could be an AC charger, you could add a battery, um, you could add in more optimizers and more panels. We sometimes see people want to expand their systems. And so that kind of gives them that future-proof ready and, and capability to do something in the future. So, but there are two different lines um, and slightly different price points. Very cool. Well, folks, this has been a brief introduction to the Solar Edge Home Hub Inverter Platform. Uh, again, Chris Thompson from Solar Edge, thanks yeah, again for joining sure. us. It's a pleasure. Thanks for coming by. All right. Well, folks, that pretty much does it for today's video. As always, I'm Joe Ordi here encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again soon. All right. I hope you're getting some great value from today's video content. Now, if you would like to have your product or your business or technology featured on the Solar Surge channel, feel free to reach out to us at the link below so you can set up a call with our media team to talk about your marketing goals and how Solar Surge can help you get there. Solar Surge is the leading online community in the U.S. residential solar and energy storage space. And so if you'd like to get your product, business, or technology in front of our audience, we can help you do that. Uh, again, feel free to reach out to our media team at the link below or email media at solarsurge.net.